Today, we're going to be using Cursor to help us create this. Now, in part one, which is linked below in the description, we built this radial progress bar within Rive. Now, in this video, we're going to make it function and tie the progress to the scroll location on the web page. So, let's get started. Gears to Cursor. All right, so Cursor, I'm going to choose a new window. We're going to start absolutely fresh. Open folder, I'm going to go to my code folder create a new folder called progress rive actual there we go that was my practice one hit select folder we're going to create a new file index.html hit the exclamation point to get some emmet abbreviations which means just get us a boilerplate so we don't have to sit there typing all this stuff we're going to link up a css forward slash main.css file that's kind of a the typical workflow that I use for just a basic HTML CSS uh, project, create a new folder called CSS, which we just referenced here, and then a new file inside of it called main.css. There we go. All right, now that we have that out of the way, the way we integrate Rive within a web, web project is through a canvas element, and we're gonna do ID equals Rive. Awesome. So we're going to switch to our CSS and I'm going to copy and paste just some basic rule sets. So we have a body. We're setting the background to the background that's consistent within the design in Figma. Height, 100 viewport height, which this is kind of necessary because we're going to have another element um, that's going to be like 300 viewport height to simulate scroll so that we can show the effect. Um, and then we also have to work with the canvas element as well because we have, you know, the flexibility of CSS to position that scroll bar or the, you know, the radial scroll bar thing that we're creating anywhere within the viewport. Um, just for this demo, I'm gonna put it smack dab in the center just because it's the, the focal point of this project. So I'm going to paste in a bunch of properties here. This position fixed, make sure it stays in the viewport fixed no matter where we scroll. Z index two, just to make sure it's on top of everything. Um, and then you can see this stuff right here will center everything up and we should be good to go. Next up, we're gonna create a div element with a class of scroll. And this is to simulate the scrolling. And we're going to find this value, and this is the value, the height of this element. This div element is going to be what we communicate to Rive based on the scrolled percentage amount, if that makes sense. You'll see, um, if, if it doesn't make sense now, you, it will in a second. So now we have to create that scroll. Um, so div class scroll right there. So in a typical real world project, you would have stuff inside of here, right? Um, if you, and perhaps for some reason you wanna have a little progress bar or some type of animation that's tied to the height value of this and how much of it has been scrolled. All right, there's a bunch of other use cases, but this is one of them. Um, now we're, we're also gonna do is, I'm gonna import two different scripts here. Um, I'm gonna show you how to use Rive to import one of them, um, but not Rive, but Cursor rather. Um, this one right here imports the Rive uh, JavaScript CDN. Now also we can use Cursor to import the Lenis Smooth Scroll CDN. So hit Control K, um, import, let me zoom up here. The Lenis Smooth Scroll CDN. Generate. All right, hit accept. There we go. Now we could also say Control K. Um, create the basic JavaScript code to make Lenis Smooth Scroll work. Hit generate. All right, there we go. Now um, hit accept, and th this looks like it's all good to me. And of course, since we have our scroll height 300, um, we can see if this actually works. Open with live server, and you can see our scroll, scroll bar. You can see that it has the local motive effect already. Of course, we don't see our project because we haven't imported it. But now the smooth scroll is working. Great, so now what we'll do is we're gonna get our actual Rive file in here, the one that we exported already. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. I'm gonna right click over here and click Reveal in File Explorer. And I'm gonna drag that off the other screen into this one. 
and rename this to rive dot riv and now we can start to reference this and get it working as intended okay so you can use by the way control k to generate you know the basic boilerplate um, for rive which you saw uh, which you can easily just hit control k to do i'm going to go ahead and uh, actually, yeah, let's just go ahead and do that. Control K. We're going to say um, create basic Rive JavaScript scaffolding to load um, a Rive file called, let me zoom up here, Rive.Rive into a canvas ID of Rive. Hit generate. Okay. Hit accept. That's great. Now let's go ahead back to our element and see. Ooh, okay. Now sometimes this will happen. Notice how it's squashed and it's looking pixelated and garbage and all that good stuff. And that's because we need to include a few other things. And this stuff, by the way, comes um, from the official Rive documentation. Um, so what we'll do is where it says uh, const r rive and it ends right here. We're going to put in a function called compute size. And then this is tied to our rive instance, this r right here. And then what we want to do also is a couple other things. And that's going to be based on these elements right here. All right, so this is kind of just boilerplate stuff that's set and forget. So now we have to call compute size. All righty, the function, and there it is. All right, so now that we have that working, we can then start using the power of cursor to help us tie the scroll animation percentage value based on the height of the scroll container up here now this could be the height of the whole document which in which case you would target the body element um, or just a specific div element if you wish as well so there's a million different possibilities to make all of this work and so in order to make this work i wrote a little prompt and i'm going to create that and so what i'll do is kind of zoom out here i'm going to select basically all the javascript and I'm going to click edit here within cursor and then paste that in. And all this says is modify this so that our set text run value scroll percentage of 30 is updated with the percentage scroll down based on the height of the scroll class. Make sure there are no decimal points and it should only be whole numbers between zero and hundred. I'm not actually going to execute this yet because you're probably confused about what this is right here. And um, this is how we actually set a text value remember the one that says 72 for the percentage value and it's called uh, scroll percentage um, 30 so this is how we essentially do that um, and just to kind of illustrate what it is i'm talking about we can set it manually just temporarily within the onload function right here so what i could do is say r dot set text run value and we're gonna say it's called scroll percentage and we're gonna put in like 30. We're gonna hard code that value just uh, for our reference. And I'm gonna hit F12 and now it's telling me the file might be corrupt. Oh, and it doesn't work because we need to put this within, uh, make it a string essentially. So now if I go back here, all right, and you can see it right here, 30. Right there. Now, of course, we hard coded it, so it's not going to work. So now what we can do is utilize that prompt that will issue to cursor. So let's get out that real quick. I'll paste that in and submit edit. All right. So it's going to create a couple functions here. Update scroll percentage. Let's go ahead and hit accept. And let's just see if it ends up working or not. So we have zero, there we go. Look at that, it works. Now, now what we need to do is right now we're only setting that 
actual text run value. It's not updating the scroll uh, percentage value that based, that's based on the number input. Um, and then to do that, it's a different process. Uh, it's not like setting a text run, it's sending an actual input, a number input value. So in order to get that to work, is the first thing that we'll do is we're going to specify um, a, we have to get all the inputs essentially that are within this state machine one. And we do this, we can do this at the beginning of uh, our on load. So again, this comes straight from the documentation. So the first line is to say const inputs equals state machine inputs are, of course, for the instance, state machine one. That's the name of our state machine. That's the default uh, name that we're given. And then what we want to do is find the specific actual state, or not state machine, but the number input name. So if you recall, we go back here. We gave this state machine, if we come over here, the input is called scroll percentage. All right. So what we'll do is I'm going to paste in some code change this to scroll percentage. And this is how we find through JavaScript, the name of the input called scroll percentage. Very simple. All right. So then down here in update scroll percentage, we also want to update this value right here called scroll input. All right. So to do that, we simply say scroll input dot value equals per uh, clamp percentage. There we go. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and save that and see if this actually works. Ah, look, it works. Look how cool that is. So now, you know, you could position this, you know, maybe to the bottom right, like what I have on my little project. But this is basically how in the process of communicating these different values then the text field and also the number input which controls both the little orb and this line from within javascript